this, Dustin. Hey, Dustin. Yes, sir. Hey, Dustin. Uh, this is Jonathan. I'm a local realtor. Hey, I'm not sure if now's a great time for us. Just hoping to quickly let you know why I called. And you can let me know if you got a quick minute. Is that okay? Why don't we do, why don't we just jump into kind of like, what does the business look like this year from a production standpoint? Um, and then give me the lead sources you're going after. And then we'll kind of unpack that a little bit. Sure. Um, you know, so um, I'll, I'll start by saying I'm, I'm, I'm very new. So there's not a whole lot to, you know, really unpack here, just other than I'm really trying to get my, you know, get my feet on the ground and get things moving. So um, just a little background here. Um, I, I got my license uh, technically in October of 2021. Um, I, you know, had a whole lot of uh, some personal things going on in that time frame that, uh, you know, we won't necessarily get into here, but uh, it really kind of had me delayed to getting even, uh, let's see, I got set up with a brokerage, I guess, mid-December. I think I joined your program maybe the first week of December. So actually before I, you know, uh, got into a brokerage here. And then of course the holidays uh, were upon us. So uh, yeah. top, top of January, I uh, got COVID. And um, so not to make those just a slew of excuses, but just kind of set it up for the reality that uh, I've only really been actively trying to start this business since I, I, I want to say like maybe uh, almost the third week of January. So um Okay. So, so that, 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 yeah, that gives me a lot of context. Thank, thank you for that. So my let's, let's get into that a little bit. Give me, what did you, where are you coming from? What were you doing before? So I can okay. see if there's any parallels there. Cause I, there's some big, big things I want to discuss with you as you're getting started. Sure. Hey, and I appreciate that. Um, well, so my background is in, in the entertainment industry. Um, you know, I spent 10 years from 2018 or excuse me, 2008 until 2018, uh, touring as a, a musician in a punk rock band. Uh, and we toured internationally for oh, across that 10 years. Um, you know, in that time, probably about halfway through that, I, I started realizing that I, I had some interest in working along with bands and, and sort of helping them with their, uh, on the business side. And so I found myself almost sort of accidentally uh, in the business of being a booking agent. So I was booking national tours for uh, artists in, uh, in North America, United States and Canada. Um, in, so by the end of 2020, I resigned from the position of the band and I continued this business full time. Um, when 2020 came, COVID was upon us. Uh, our whole industry, the bottom just fell out. Um, anybody doing any sort of ticketed based live events kind of knows where, what I'm talking about. Yeah, so. it fell off the map, I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I went. I was working with 14 bands full time. I had somewhere around 200 shows, um, and I would estimate that probably uh, you know uh, amounts to about $300,000 in contracts that were just gone within the span of a few days. So since then, I have uh, been resourceful enough to find some work in uh, various totally unrelated um, places. And uh, and to be honest, I've done better in those in terms of just financially than I expected, but it's not really the long-term game here. And I've always had some interest in real estate. Um, so I decided in 2021, I was no longer just going to kind of leave my life up to chance and, and take a, a real intentional direction. And, uh, you know, I went into real estate school, got my license. Here we are. So. Got it. Got it. Thank you for that. That, that actually helps a lot. The thing is, and you've probably heard me talk about this quite some time now and working together just for a short amount of time, but you know, I, I always get, um, what's the word? Probably, I get concerned. I actually, just shooting you straight, I get really concerned for most people that get in this business because, you know, as you're finding out, most people think it's one thing. They find out it's a completely different thing after they've got through their, their licensing school and they're like, gosh, what in the world did I just do to myself? And what I'm talking about specifically is the fact that real estate is one of the hardest businesses. And the reason for that is because it's an outbound sales business, meaning nobody's coming to you. Any time, any money you're going to make in this industry, you're going to have to go out into the wilderness, hunt, kill it, prep it, eat it. Where other sales business like car sales or insurance, clients and customers are coming to you, right? So um, you now probably understand that. And what is your thought on that? Because what I'm about to get into with you is hopefully going to set some good expectations for what you can expect moving forward. But what is your mindset around this, this situation that you're now in, which is you eat what you kill? 
Well, uh, you know, I'll start by saying I'm totally up for the challenge. Um, and I want to say that I'm also equal parts terrified, um, you know, just because that is a reality and, and I'm, not, I'm not turning away and running from it. Um, but I, I do know that it, there's, it's not going to be an easy road. And one, th one of the things I really respect about what you teach is that um, you don't lead anybody to believe that it's going to be something you can just, you know, turn around and find tomorrow by some sort of, you know, cute little trick or, you um, you know, some sort of a uh, little magic pill that just doesn't exist in this business. And so, you know, all that to say, um, I, I'm fully aware of what it's going to take in terms of just on paper. Now it's just a matter of being able to execute it. And, you know, I've got some struggles that we can elaborate more here in a, in a few minutes that I'm having, you know, getting into this, but really, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult. And um, if, if I can, if I can say this, you know, um, part of what led me to you is that I actually interviewed with a couple of uh, sort of the major kind of big franchise, you know, box um, brokerages here. And uh, I, I guess I expected them to be able to give me some sort of direct answer as to like what it looks like to uh, build a business. And I was really almost kind of stunned to find that um, what they provided me was a whole lot of uh, non answers. I felt like, um, you know, um, and by that, I mean that like, it seemed like the go-to thing was like, well, just talk about real estate a lot with your friends and, you know, just kind of, yeah, things will happen, you know, and I, I respect a lot of people who have been able to make a business almost passively over a 10 year span when they've had other focuses and, and then they kind of find themselves in a position where they have a really thriving business. Um, but let's be honest, most people don't have that luxury or necessarily, you know, I'm 42 years old, so I, I, I maybe that would have been a good place to approach from, from a, at 22 years old, but uh, maybe. Yeah. But I, I hear, yeah, that's keep going. This is, yeah, you're exactly yeah, yeah. right. Th these are all my frustrations about the industry that like the work that we do is, is uh, that's why we do what we do, but keep going. Sure. Um, and that's a good, that's a good point when you say maybe, I mean, you know, I think you, you could probably advocate that probably maybe not even then, you know, right. at 22, but then that's, that's a good point. But um yeah, I guess I just feel like that um, if I'm going to be intentional about this, I've got to have some sort of decisive action that needs to be taken. And so uh, I stumbled onto your YouTube channel, like many of us, and uh, I started following a lot of content. And uh, and I really just connected with how it didn't seem to follow the same um, scripting and protocols that are, as far as the approach to talking to sellers. And uh, it didn't feel salesy, which is, I guess, really on brand with what it is you teach. So. Um, you know, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah, because we we take a science back approach. So so what we did with reverse selling.com just to give you some context real quick is we, we took like the study of social social psychology, human behavioral psychology, and uh, the Socratic method, we blended the two. So that's why when you hear it, it doesn't sound salesy, because what we teach as you now are learning, is like, how to communicate with people in the most effective way based on their own beliefs. And so that's why old traditional sales doesn't, for whatever reason, doesn't take into consideration how humans make buying decisions, which is so weird to me. It's sure. convinced, it's pressure, and it's the exact opposite of what we now know through studies, hundreds and thousands of studies on how people make decisions and so that's probably what you feel. So, so um, get into, tell me about the struggles. Like you're about to say you, you're struggling with some things. Tell me about that. Yeah. You know, to be honest, it's really just, uh, it can all be sort of focused into the fact that I have a lot of call reluctance and uh, you know, I guess I could say, I could use the excuse that, well, I'm only, you know, three or four weeks into giving this a real try, but you know, when it comes down to it, um, I'm not calling enough people every day. And there's, that's just, right. there's just no way around that. And um uh, and, you know, I, I am making an effort to call some people every day. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not I, just if you look at the math, I'm not going to be able to, to have enough conversations that are going to lead to enough opportunities. Now, what's what I find interesting is that for the most part, uh, there's some there's some scenarios that stumble me just like anybody new trying something new like this. Uh, for the most part, when I get on the phone or on a call, um, after that first couple of exchanges, I feel pretty comfortable, right? Uh, you know, because working with people in, in, in a general sense is something that I'm really very comfortable with. But 
it's the anticipation of those conversations that is is actually creating way more of a, a, a mental block or obstacle than I was prepared for. And um, so I'm kind of trying to work through that. Um, I guess let's talk through that. Let, let's talk. Let me let me pause you right there because that that is huge. And the fact that you're so self aware and you can pinpoint the exact things, John, like that people are struggling with. Well, what, what you're struggling with, most people can't, most people are not self-aware. So the call reluctance thing, you're exactly right. It's anticipating things are going to be a lot worse than they are. So there's a lot of studies around what you just said, which is what we find is motivation and inspiration comes through, comes after you've taken action. So right. exactly what you said, after you make the first call, after you get in the saddle a little bit, like you feel fine, right? It's the driving to the gym. It's the getting up and getting your ass in the car to go to the gym, which is the problem. But then once you get there and then once you leave, once you start, stop making your calls, you're like, gosh, that was great. Like I had real conversations with real people that led to real opportunity. Why can't I just do that every single day? Right. And yeah. this is where the whole dynamic around being attached to the outcome comes into play. And so the thing I want to share with you this morning before we jump on the uh, uh, on some calls is like you have to allow yourself to go through this first 90 days of absolute hell. And the only agents I see that come through this on the other side that have any level of success are the ones that really pay the price for the first 90 days because you have no pipeline. And we're going to find out about your skills. I'm not, I don't know where your skills lie yet, but we're going to find out here in a second. Sure. Typically, there's this relationship between activity and skills. And in the beginning, as a new salesperson, the activities have to be like extraordinary uncomfortable because you don't have a pipeline. And for most salespeople, they just don't have a lot of skills. So to give you context around what I'm talking about for you, specifically, it probably will take you a hundred conversations in the, in, in the probably your first year to find yourself at a real listing appointment. Whereas agents that might be doing this for two, three years, because now they have a pipeline. Now they have skills that it works in opposite, right? So it might take somebody 20 conversations to get on a listing appointment. Cause now you have a database, you've got past clients, you've got some momentum, things are happening in your business. So that all probably makes sense to you. So the question then becomes, okay, well, how many dials are we making per day? How many conversations are you having right now, roughly on a daily basis? Well, um, you know, uh, part of my challenge has been that, uh, and I'm sure this is not unique to a lot of people in different markets, but um, you know, some days there's one or two if is some days zero, some days there's randomly four or five. And uh, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm almost always, at least the last few weeks, ripping through all of those. Um, and then I kind of don't know what, what I, I'm, I'm struggling to find what lead source I need to be. I need to be determining what is the, the next lead source I'm looking into because um, it can't just be Fizbo's for me right now. Now, maybe down the line, when I built, to your point, a, a bigger pipeline, I can sort of lean more into that. But right now I've got a, so I did just get Vulcan 7. That's something that I'm just now diving into. This morning I'll probably hand dial just so I'm screwed up. But um, yeah, but yeah. so that, so, you know, I know that there's some opportunity there and I'm, I'm curious to see what your input would be. Yep. So my thoughts are for sure, you're going to want to add in ex expired listings. For sure, for rent by owners, that comes with your Vulcan 7 subscription, right? You have all three of those right now sitting in Vulcan 7? Uh, yes. For, you yeah. said for rent by owners, third one? For rent by owners, expires, and then your FISBOs. They all come with Vulcan 7 already. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just take those sources for just a second and expand on them just a bit. With expired listings, you can go to Vulcan 7, which I highly recommend, and go and get the past two, three, four years of old expired listings that have not relisted yet. So that'd be a spot where you can really, really spend some time for sure. And then absentee owners, as you've heard me say, you can do this right inside Vulcan 7 now. Yeah. So you, okay. So you can go Somebody inside walked. Vulcan 7. Did you already do it? Somebody walked me through that the other day. And so I, I, I know that's going to be a place I just got to crack into. Correct. So, so those would be, um, those would be the, the, the three or four sources of business. And then, to get your contacts up, I would, I would 
add in potentially if you need it, because you might not need it. If you're calling new expired listings at 8 a.m., the new for sale by owners at 830, the new for rent by owners at 840, the old expired listings, absentee owners, like that might get you your 20, 30 conversations per day, which is where you probably need to live moving forward so that you find yourself a listing opportunity once a week. Because if I expand that out just for, a, for, for 30 days, watch how this works. So if you just did that specifically, right? So not overcomplicating anything. We just focused on 20, 25 new conversations per day. At the end of every single week, you should find yourself on a real listing opportunity. Four per month as a new agent, you should be able to secure two. And in your market, the average commission is how much? Um, so I, I think the, the, the median home sale price is 250. So, I mean, was that eight? five grand, six grand? So, so just like my market. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. So five or six K, right. So I don't know how much your goals are from an income perspective, but as a new agent for most people, if they're getting into six figures in their first year in business, that puts them in a good spot. Is that what kind of your mindset is? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, may maybe I'm underscore shooting my, go my goal here, but my goal was to absolutely be in position to be making six figures in 2023. So this year was more of like a, you know, let's, uh, let, let me, you know, really create a, a solid source of income in a business. Now, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's not ambitious enough, but. Um, that's great. I, no, no, it's all good. I mean, it's a good expectation. And the thing, I think the, the, the where you should leave this conversation is, a hundred converse, new conversations per week has got to be your only focus. Going back to the whole call reluctance thing, like if you can just focus on having a hundred conversations over five days, right? Sometimes you'll have 15, some days you'll have 30, but over the course of a week, that's a hundred conversations. Like just really gump this down to the most simplistic piece of our business. That's you're going to find yourself on 4,800 conversations in 2022. Like you're going to, you're going to do just fine. And you don't have to think about anything else. Like just remove everything else from your existence right now and just focus on a hundred a week, a hundred a week, a hundred a week, a hundred a week, and then attach yourself to that goal. Because sure. what, what you're going to find is that if you do that, as you do that, you will, the, the byproduct, the result of that will be you getting listings and making money. You follow right. me on that? It makes yeah. sense, right? Absolutely. And I, and you know, I think because I'm not making that amount of context, right. I am inherently becoming far too attached to the outcome. That's <laughs> right. Because when you have less of something, you're more attached to something, right? Yeah. If you're having a hundred conversations in a week, it'll just feel different. And then through that, like we talked about at the beginning of the session, your call reluctance will start to subside. It'll start to just dissipate because you'll, you'll, you'll forget about like how you feel about like, put all that aside hundred conversations a week. Like that is what you need to do at a minimum, quite frankly. And so to give you some context, this will, I don't know how this will, what this will do to your mind. My goal was hundred a day when I first got started. Wow. <laughs> because all I know is the world I grew up in and maybe I'm lucky. I don't know. Like I grew up in sales. Like that was my, I've been in sales since I've been 16, right? So I understand the correlation between activity and skills. And I know that you, you said it yourself. I mean, you can boil everything down to a salesperson's success or failure back to how many people they're talking to on a daily basis. It is that simple, but we, we want to overcomplicate the hell out of it, right? Like we want to think about a bunch of stuff and our feelings come into it. It's like, dude, Let's just have the conversation. So anyway, I, I think a hundred is a great place to start. I mean, okay. depending on how bad you want it, how, 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 how like self-disciplined, how self-driven you are. Like I like to turn up the heat on myself. I like to practice discipline. That's why I like to fast for so long and not eat. You know, that's why I like to do very, very hard things because it's all practicing on self-discipline. And the more disciplined we, we, we are, and you already know this, the bigger life we will have. And this has been exactly my experience, you know? And so I make it a game, going back to detaching from the outcome, I make it a game and then I'll digress, I'll get off this, but how much 
can you feel of the day? Can you feel uncomfortable? Like if you're just going through the day and it's pretty simple, like let that be your new evidence that like, dude, kick yourself in the ass. It's like, come on, man. Like if you're not sweating and getting uncomfortable, dude, I used to sweat through three or four shirts prospecting every day, you know? Cause I'm like, but I just keep pushing through, pushing through, pushing through, pushing through. And then what happens? Here's what happens. A magical thing happens. You hear me talk about it all the time. Darren Hardy talks about all the time, the compound effect, right? It is a real thing in prospecting because three, four months of doing this, you'll have so much business at that point. The new problem will be keeping up with your clients and prospecting. You want to, that's what happens every single time, but you've got to build the pipeline. You got to push that boulder up the hill right now. Sure. Okay. That's all good input. I appreciate that. I, you know, it's, it, a lot of it's things that I, I know I need to be doing, but I really That's right. need, need to hear it uh, over and over again. To be I know honest. it. I know it. We know what to do. It's not about knowing what to do. It's will we do it? You know, that's yeah. the thing. It's not about what it's all about will. So let's, let's dive in a little bit. Let's call the fresh for sale by owners. How many do you have uh, in Vulcan seven this morning? Um, well, there was only, I think two, um, but there was a, I saw another that was on Zillow that didn't quite get imported in. And then I have a couple from yesterday Perfect. Uh, that, that I didn't get contacted. So let's, let's just kind of start from there and see what we get. And I have gone on a couple of previews so far, I think three, you know, okay. so, you know, it's not a lot of activity, but I have at least had that experience. Um, and they've gone pretty well. One of them I actually thought was a pretty solid lead and he, you know, he ended up um, signing an agreement with, um, with a, a family member so you know got it kind of what it is but all right so let me pull up this first one here and like i said i'm just gonna hand dial because i'm absolutely still getting used to the dialer here i used to watch your old videos where you would do these prospecting calls with yeah with it, was, it was actually this will be fun man so there's no rush just we'll just chill and let's we'll just let it ring and okay cool you have reached a number that is not currently set up to receive calls. Please try again later. Uh, I'm going to make sure I dialed the right number. Yeah. I definitely did not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our area code here is 405, and this number is 402, so I think I just dialed the... I, just, I think that's Omaha. Yeah, interesting, huh? Okay. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Well, this does... Hey, Dustin. Yes, sir. Hey, Dustin. Uh, this is Jonathan. I'm a local realtor. Hey, I'm not sure if now's a great time for it. I was just hoping to quickly let you know why I called. And you can let me know if you got a quick minute. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm actually over at the break room right now just getting some coffee at work. But I have uh, just a couple minutes here. Okay, excellent. Hey, listen, I'm calling about the home over here on Adler Road. Uh, I see that you're selling that for sale by owner. Is that correct? That's right. Yep. Awesome. Well, firstly, I, I just want to say I totally respect that. Honestly, it's pretty smart in this market, you know. Um, yep. Really, I was just, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy out here. Um, yeah. I was mostly just curious if you are open to the idea of a realtor bringing you a potential buyer in the event they had a, you know, fully qualified buyer. Um, yeah, I would, uh, I would consider that. I, now I got a call with all this exact same wording about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You're probably going to get a lot of script or something. You guys are uh, reading the same script. <laughs> oh, right on. Well, that's probably a fairly common question. I'm sure you're going to hear from a lot of us today, and I apologize. Okay. Uh, so, again, I don't oh, want to take right. too, too much of your time here. Um, really, I was just hoping that uh, I'm going to be kind of in your similar area here later today. I was hoping maybe I could swing by and take a look at your home while I'm looking at some others. I'm, I'm, today, I'm looking at between 1 and 3 o'clock, um, if that could work, or I could also do tomorrow afternoon, whichever works better. Well, I, I worked uh, normal hours during the day. I mean, I would be open to showing the place only if a potential buyer were with me. Oh, you know, I, I, if a potential buyer came along, I, I don't want to be, uh, you know, showing it, you know, all that often. I mean, I've already gotten <laughs> probably a dozen calls between the, this weekend and now. I think people are trying to convince me to list it with them. Yeah. Um, open house, for example. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, just, you know, I'm not, I'm not calling you today to try to list your home. Um, right. I totally respect that, by the way, you know, just to give you a little context. So, you know, every day, um, you know, I, as a local professional, I just like to get out here and look at what the new inventory looks like. As I know you're aware, it's a super limited inventory. And uh, so that 
really for yeah. me, that for me includes, you know, the publicly um, listed homes as well as for sale by owners. So, um, so to, to be clear, I don't have a buyer specifically for your home, um, but I just like to, you know, know what the inventory looks like. So truthfully, I was just hoping for a quick 10 minute run through or, or do you live local or? Um, I'm local, yeah. yeah I'm, uh, I work and live in, uh, well, I work in North Oklahoma City to live up that place in Edmond. Okay, gotcha. Well, you know, how late do you work today uh, or generally? Um, Probably by 5, 6 o'clock, somewhere around there, and then got to go home. And I, I'm normally home by like 6 30. Okay, do you live pretty near this? Do you actually live in the home? I do, yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Down, well, cool. Well, hey, I want to be respectful of your time here. Um, yeah. But, you know, if I could make, you know, around or a little after six o'clock work, uh, you know, would it be possible to swing through and just take a quick five minute peek at your house? Uh, you know, I'm not going to um, I'm not going to come over and try to, you know, arm wrestle you over a listing here today. Really, I, truthfully, I just want to see kind of what you're working with, if that's OK. Yeah, that's fine. And yeah, just as long as the focus remains of finding a, um, one of your clients going to buy it, I, I just have no interest in having someone post an open house or trying to list with them. Yeah, no, I totally, totally respect that. Well, okay, um, I'm, I'm going to pencil you in for six o'clock if that's okay. Uh, what I'd like yes, to do, uh, what I'd like to do in the meantime here, if that's okay, uh, let me just shoot you over an email so you kind of have an idea who who is going to be swinging by. Uh, what's the best email for you typically? Okay, well, listen, I'm going to go ahead and shoot uh, you just a little bit of brief information to you shortly, and um, here later today, I'll, I'll just shoot you a text if that's okay, just to confirm that I'm on the way. And uh, yeah, no. otherwise, plan on seeing you around six o'clock. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, hey, thanks for your time, Dustin. Have a good one. Bye. Sure. All right. So, tell me about that. What, what your thoughts are, and, and and where you're at with that. I mean, and then we'll get. I got got some feedback. I'll I'll uh, sure. unpack for you. Well, um, so in my limited experience, I uh, you know with talking to sellers, I mean, I probably talked to. I don't know, 30 or 40 at this point, not a ton, not a lot, not a hundred a week. Um, yeah. You know, I will say that I'm, I'm used to them having some reluctance. There is generally the objective about, do you have a buyer? Um, you know, which is totally understandable. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of used to that. Um, I, I have had people say they don't want to, you know, aren't looking to have their home listed or so, but I, I've never had somebody so very specifically say, as long as you're not trying to list my home. So, uh, you know, th this is a call, if I'm being totally honest with you that I probably would have bailed on if we weren't on this call together. I'm, yeah. just being, I'm just being totally forward with you about that. So I'd like to hear your feedback though. Yeah, uh, for sure. Well, that's, let me just tell you, that's the benefit of like, there's an effect that human beings go through, right? Call an accountability call, whatever you want. When somebody knows they're being watched, they always do more sure. like, right. That's why personal <clears throat> training and coaching and accountability and visibility, all of that works <laughs> to your sure. point. So, so thanks for being honest. You stood in the pocket, like overall, like overall, like I was very, very presently uh, surprised that you stood in the pocket because I thought you were going to bail. And now, so, so overall, I would tell you that was the framework of the call was very good. There's a couple things. Obviously, he was, he was short for time. I would have liked for you to understand their motivation, his motivation for selling, okay. right? So at the end, we found out that he lived there, but like the key thing in sales, you will absolutely want to take this away is finding the source of either their pleasure or their pain goals or their pain, right? So the why really, really matters when selling real estate, just so you know, like it is all about motivation, like everything we do. So where are you moving? When do you want to move there? What has you moving there are the three questions you need to ask on almost every single phone call if you can, all right? Okay, cool. That's the key to unlocking real conversations with people, right? So that's number one. Number two, all right, so this is an appointment that um, with the information I have today, I wouldn't even advise you going on. Wow, Tell okay. me why you think that though. Um, well, for one, because I, I feel like that... Uh you know, uh, there's, there's lack of qualification there for one, because I didn't ask for motivate motivation. Uh, and you know, the other would be that, uh, it sounds like he's, uh, I don't know to me, I, I would probably come to the same conclusion for different reasons. I would think the reason that I would come to that conclusion is that th this guy is, is, it seems pretty clear that he doesn't want to uh, talk about listing. And I also 
personally might feel a little uncomfortable sending him my resume or whatever that's very listing based <laughs> but yeah that's just so you're close you're close there's two things here okay, okay. so number one when you so you said that twice like you know you're used to people saying they're not interested in listing well we already know that up front right when they put it up for sale by owner you and i already can assume that they're not interested in listing yeah. because you have to take the rules of like we call them the rules of engagement it's like it's like this right so it would be like asking somebody at the altar when they're getting married if they're open to getting a divorce with that person the same day, like, what are they going to say a hundred percent of the time? Sure. No, no. Like, dude, I'm getting married. Are you <laughs> fucking stupid? Like, what are you talking about? Right. So, so like realtors always say that to me respectfully, I, you know, like we already know he doesn't want to list these, <laughs> would, he would have listed it. He's selling by owner. So we know that sure. what we know, here's what we do know in, and I'll relate it back to marriage. What we do know with for sale by owners is over time, if they can't sell on their own, then they start to look at other options, but not day one. So I don't look at them saying I'm not interested in listing as an objection. I yeah. already knew that the yeah. same way somebody at the altar isn't thinking about divorce the exact same day, most likely over okay. time, when they find out they're married to an asshole, well, potentially they would get divorced down the road. This is the same thing with for sale by owners. You with me? Yeah. So in selling specifically though, there are, you, you got to get really good at like these hypothetical micro commitments. Okay. And what I mean by that is this, which is the second piece. Well, maybe the third piece, but like the, where you're going to find a lot of success is not like, it's going to be absolutely rare if ever for you, just so you know, where you make one call and like, they're so open to talking to you. They're so open to setting a listing appointment. It's going to be very, very, very rare. What you have to, and I'd put this on your wall, you're making, for the most part, lead generation calls. Yes, yeah. you're looking for appointments, phenomenal. But for the most part, you're generating leads that are going to the top of the funnel because these are people you're talking to for the first time. Remember, appointments come from lead follow-up, right? So these initial calls I'm looking for my mindset. My expectation is I'm looking for leads to go into the top of my funnel that are qualified to go on the top of my funnel. So let me explain this second half of the feedback. So one, we talked about, um, well, I'm going to come back to that too in just a second. The reason I don't like this appointment is because why are you going to the appointment? What does this guy believe the basis of the meeting is about? Uh, well, about, uh, about potentially having a buyer. That's right. He even yeah. said it like, yeah, I'd be happy to meet with you just from an expectation standpoint about the whole buyer. Yeah. We never, ever, ever want to go on appointments like that ever. Yeah. Well, you know what? And, and I just want to uh, toss in here that I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. One thing that I've seen and, you know, obviously uh, I'm open to everybody's input and, you know, uh, I'm the last to give any that is very valuable to anyone else who's successful in this business, but um, you know, interacting with the group, some, sometimes I'll, I'll have discussions where I'm like, well, I, I probably wouldn't even go on this, uh, you know, if, for that reason, because to me, if it's predicated on their expectation of, of having a buyer, I, I, I don't think that that's the right position to be in. Uh, but I've seen a lot of folks that seem to think, well, that's kind of given up too soon because you don't necessarily know. So I'm kind of trying to balance that fine line of like, well, is, you know, because things can be different when you're in person. Um, so watch, yeah. watch, I'm going to give you the actual specific area for that. Okay. There, the, the advice that they're giving is not wrong. I agree with the advice under this context. Okay. So had you set the appointment and he didn't bring up anything around like, okay, just to be absolutely clear, like I'm only showing it to you because you could sell it to a potential buyer. Right. Had he not said that because you could set preview appointments with script 1.0, doing exactly what you just did on that phone call. Like, and I don't know if you have done that or not. Those I'm perfectly fine with, right? You Does that make sense? Yeah. And I am using 1.0. I kind of just deviated <clears throat> a little bit from what he said, but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah no worries. So, so that's fine. That's what they're saying. But when somebody is so specific about the buyer, here's yeah. the second piece of the feedback. What you have to ask immediately 
is the the FISBO qualifying question. The if then question. Okay. Yeah. This is the whole piece of feedback that I probably have a half page of notes on for you specifically. That's going to help you the most. All right. So in, in reverse selling, there's this if then type of uh, relationship. And this is where I was hoping you were going to go with that guy. It was perfect. So okay. we respect the fact that he's selling on his own. We already know that. Okay. So that's why it's so easy to um, talk through us. Like it's so, it's so easy just to be so agreeable. Like you were like, of course you're selling on your own. You got to try to sell on your own. I, the, the reason why I'm calling, the reason why I'm calling is if in the event you don't sell talking about two, three, four weeks into the future, mm -hmm. would you be then open to potentially looking at some other options? We're going to explore that conversation where that conversation, what we're trying to lead that conversation to, which a lot of for sale by owners would tell you, listen, yeah, if we can't sell, sure, we'd be open to some other options. Okay, cool. Then it leads to us emailing the backup plan. Then it leads to a preview appointment around the backup plan. Got so it. if I'm role-playing this with you, that exact same guy, right? I would say, you know what, Jonathan, listen, I get it, right? You got to try to sell this thing on your own. The market's phenomenal. The reason why I'm calling is I don't have a buyer for you. I'm not going to start this off the wrong way by lying to you. You know, if two, three, four weeks into the future, you're unsuccessful selling, which I don't think will be the case. For some people it is, but for most it isn't how hot the market is. At that point, would you consider maybe looking at some other options and talking with realtors? I'm just curious. And if he says something that's favorable, right? Let's just pretend you responded to that and you said, yeah, probably be open to that. I would say, cool. Well, here's, I guess what I'll do. And I don't mind at all. I can send you an email with what I call my for sale by owner backup plan. A lot of people in our market love the plan. Take a look at it. If you find any value in it whatsoever, you and I can have further conversations about that in the future. Fair enough. And the guy says, yeah, cool. It's very non-threatening because I'm not asking him to commit to anything today. We're talking about a hypothetical situation into the future. So this is how we get people to open up. So then I email him the backup plan, right? Then when I'm on the phone, I would then go for the preview appointment under those circumstances. So watch this. So I say, okay, cool. I'll email you as soon as we hang up. I guess, let me just ask you this. And again, I'm happy to do it. This is what I do every single day. Um, would you find value in me stopping my, giving you some feedback about the property, walking you through maybe some things that can help you sell on your own. And when I'm there, I'll walk you through how my backup plan works. And then you could decide, Jonathan, if this is something you would consider down the road or not. Would you be open to at least a 10 minute conversation? And you and I are virtual high-fiving when you set an appointment like that. Would you agree? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Like you're like, dude, this is phenomenal. Right. So now that the context of the meeting is about potentially working together in the future, which we know is our only chance to convert the for sale by owner anyways. Like you're not, the guy's not going to list his house today. We already know that. So let's sure. not have that conversation. Let's not have the buyer conversation. Cause we know we don't have one of those either. We have to look in the hypothetical situation about the future. That is where all conversion with for sale by owners live. Got it. Okay. That's great. That's really good feedback. I have, I have explored that, you know, that, that particular, you know, I, 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 I call that sort of like a pivot to 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and it's gone pretty well, but usually, um, usually it's after some like rapport is built and I don't feel like they have like very limited time. Uh, and right. they are, you know, but to your point, I think that maybe this is a, this was a very specifically perfect call to have that conversation because right what better way to respond to like, Hey man, uh, just so you know, I'm not listing my home today. That that's really, he gave, he opened the door for me and I totally went around it. <laughs> yeah. So, so every time you hear on these coaching calls, you're going to hear a lot of people ask, you know, what do I say when they say, do you have a buyer? Right. This is what I want you to respond with. Right. Instead of setting the appointment with them believing that you potentially have a buyer in the future, that to your point, that is the door opening wide open for you to have the conversation around the around the future. Like that reason why it's designed that way. So you have the you can continue to use script 1.0, right? Just like you're doing. If you set the appointment and you don't get pressed about like, do you have a buyer? I'm only showing if I have a buyer. You set that appointment. I'm comfortable with those, right? Go on that preview every single time. 
if you get pressed about the buyer, door opens for you to talk about hypothetical opportunities in the future. And what you're going to walk into is you're going to find out right on the call. Wow. I just found a listing opportunity yeah, because here's the thing. You're going to be in this business in 30 days from today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's when I hopefully can give you an aha moment. Like, okay, imagine a, a second right now, watch, let me paint a picture for you. Okay. That you have these hundred, hundred conversations every week. Like we talked about that should yield you between five and 10 of what we're talking about leads in the top of your funnel. These are people that tell you, yeah, we'd be open to potentially meeting with you, talking with you more uh, in the future. Okay. So you get to Friday and you got 10 of these things in now in your pipeline into phase two of your pipeline where you, now you can start following up. This is how you start building a pipeline. Right. And then at the end of a week, you go on maybe one or two of a, a preview appointment under the circumstances of reviewing the backup plan. So you yielded, right? Let's just call it five absolute listing opportunity leads. They went to the database and you met with one or two of them about the backup plan. This is when you're going to start to feel completely different about the activities that you're doing on a daily basis, being more intentional, which is what you said at the beginning of the session. Like now you can put, like you could start to make sense of the work that you're putting forth. You could see it coming to fruition. You can absolutely detach from the outcome because here's what's going to happen. You'll wake up in 30, 60 days with finding yourself on listing appointments that you generated 30, 60 days ago, because we're focused not on right this second, we're focused on lead, uh, uh, generating a lead. Then they get into our follow-up system, which then turn into appointments, which then turn into listings. This all happens over 30, 60, 90 days. I'll make, I'll put a nice bow on this for you as we end the session, because I told you the first 90 days, you have to pay the price. Okay, this is what we're talking about. If you can do exactly what we're talking about right now, at the end of 60 or 90 days, that's when you're going to start going on listing appointments. That's when you're going to start obtaining contracts to be signed. But you got to do everything that leads up to those things in the meantime. Okay. That, you that know, guy that could have been a great lead. That guy was so reasonable. Yeah. He was, he was, I mean, what a way to start the day. And honestly, that's huge, Brandon. I really appreciate that. That's uh, something I've been having trouble around. And now that kind of really gives me like the right moment to employ that, that pivot. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate the input. Yeah, dude, no worries. And so I like to keep these just at 30 minutes. I just want to hear you on a call so I can really understand this. Sure. I'd love to do this again with you, like in another couple of weeks after you execute on some of the things we're talking about. But what is your biggest takeaways from, from this session? Really, uh, that it was, it's that. It's that, you know, it, it really sh it turned the lights on uh, in, in the room to, to really expose to me that I'm spending too much time working with that objection rather than utilizing that objection as an opportunity to, to, to pivot. And, and, and that's really kind of what I needed to hear. Um, you know, overall, you know, can I ask, did, do you feel like that my my skills in terms of just like interacting on the phone are, you know, have room for opportunity or how, how did you feel there? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. I, I, I mean, obviously you're still reading the script, right? Is that what sure, you were looking yeah. back and forth at? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like it sound, you still sound scripted, right? Even the guy even said you sound scripted, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so what comes over time with making lots of phone calls is you can say the same thing on the script. It's just going to come out a different way. Like, you'll hear me on our coaching calls and people always ask me like, where does it say that in the script? Well, I'm saying the same thing, right? And you've heard me sure. say this before. It's not about the words. It's all about how I deliver what I say, not what I say. And mm -hmm. so generally speaking, you're still in like phase one of like, you're just very scripted. Like it's right in front of you, you're reading it verbatim. So yeah. that's how it sounds. That's how it comes across, right? So what I like to see you do, and you're only going to get this way through making these hundred contacts a week, right? That's what I was hoping you were going to say. As far as when I said, what are your biggest takeaways? I would say that's more important than the skill thing we talked about. Okay. It's more important for you to have a hundred conversations it, than it is for you to pivot to 2.0 qualifier. Okay. Cause if yeah. you're only having five contacts a day, you're still going to not be where you want to be. Sure. No matter where the skills are at. That's yeah. exactly right. That is exactly right. So going back to like, generally speaking, um, 
again, I can give you these words. They won't have a lot of meaning to you yet, but like we have to find ourselves uh, in a position where when we're having a conversation, we're a lot more relatable. It's easier for people to connect. We're a lot more conversational. We have more fun and it's not so, I can feel the tension you have between call and what you're saying. I can feel it. And sure. that's another source of the call reluctance. And so you have to turn that into, okay, like just keeping in mind, you know that 90% of these are going to go nowhere, right? So you live in the 10%. So, so instead of like, oh my God, this guy is on the, like, just have a lot of fun with it and run the play exactly how it's designed without worrying about what they're going to say, or if you get the appointment or any of those things, like have fun, make it more conversational, like be, try to be more natural, right? In the conversation and less about shit, what do I have to say now? Like, what is the next line in the script? Like really listening to the guy, right? So that's where I go back to the feedback I gave you earlier, the motivation. You know, I forget the guy's name. I call everybody Bob, as you probably that's are aware. Same. And I say, Bob, uh, dude, I'm curious, man. Like, you're, you're, I don't know your area, right? But like, you're in a great city. Are you guys staying here? Are you guys getting something bigger? Like, what does that look like? You know, that's very conversational, just like you would have with anybody. Well, here's the deal, right? You talk about building rapport. This is how you do it, you know? And so we, we have the prospect become the salesperson by complimenting where they're currently at. That's another skill thing, right? So we compliment their house. We compliment the price. Man, it seems like a great deal, man. You're giving this thing away, right? Uh, you're in a great neighborhood, you know? Why not stay put? Then you put the, the prospect in a position to open up because it's so non-threatening. Well, you know what, Jonathan? We, you're right, man. We love this place. But boom, and then you get the gold. You yeah. get the goal, right? You get the need. You get the pain. You get to understand why they're, they're doing what they're doing, aka motivation. Then we play off the motivation to further the relationship that leads us to their kitchen table. Got it. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks so much. I appreciate it. I know we went a little bit over here, but this has been very valuable to me. Yeah, so. dude. No worries, man. This was a lot of fun. Let's let's schedule another one of these in the next couple of weeks. Make sure obviously you'll you'll be in our regular coaching calls. But yeah, this is sure. a lot of fun. I think there's there's uh you get it, which is the most exciting thing. So 100 contacts a week. Let's focus on that. Got it. Okay. Hey, thanks so much. Have a good rest of your day. I appreciate it. We'll talk soon. All right, brother. Talk to you soon. Yeah.